Welcome back to another episode of Accelerate to Great. I'm your host, Nehemiah Davis, and today we got a super duper duper special episode for you guys. So you guys already know I am I am adamant about helping more people start businesses in 2019. I am adamant about helping more people fire their boss if that's the option they want. I am adamant about helping more people get their story told. I am adamant about helping you become the most successful individual that you can possibly be, right? And one of the keys to becoming successful and generating more money, I believe, is getting your story out there, right? Literally, I believe getting your story out here. So today's podcast episode is going to be about how to get your story out here, how to monetize your own story. And I figured, hey, I think the best person to interview, although I have three books, I said, yo, I need to interview my brother, Sean. Number one, he got multiple books out here. He helped dozens and dozens and dozens of people become authors. Why would I go anywhere else than for him to come share this information? So I get the opportunity to bring my brother Sean to this platform, guys. He's a world traveler. He produced several books, have helped several other people produce books. We had the opportunity to speak together at the White House. I had the opportunity to first see him speaking at a conference where he really motivated me and empowered me to just take even more action over my life. And since then, we become partners. We work together. We're friend tours. And our ultimate goal is to help each other succeed and win. But my ultimate goal is to help you do the exact same thing. So without further ado, I want to bring world-renowned artist, author, and all-around amazing brother, Sean, to the uh, line. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm good, man. You know what? I need you to do my intros wherever we going. I need you to go ahead and intro me, bro. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Hey, it got to be done right, bro. And when I say artists, guys, because I don't want people, not a music artist. When I say artists, anyone who's producing on their own, I look at them as an artist. So they're designing their own life. So just for anyone like, he does music? No, he don't, doesn't do music. Yeah. When I say artist, someone who's literally taking a pen and pad and they're writing their own future. So, hey, bro, I'm really happy uh, for you to be here. And um, I, don't, I don't want you to go too deep into it, but a lot of people, Sean, they be like, Oh, he was born with money. Someone gave him something. But I know my dad been in jail since I was two for murder. I know you you was a, was a crack baby. So I want people to understand a little bit of your background and how you got to where you are. Because a lot of people are like, oh, they was given something. No, we literally work hard for everything that we have. So I kind of want you to uh, spend a couple minutes on your background. Yeah. And you know what? I like to even say, man, you know, one thing that we were given was hunger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... Sometimes I know that Tony Robbins always talks about the people that are the most successful in the world. Uh, when you really look at their stories, they have these stories of triumph and these stories of overcoming because as an entrepreneur, man, we're solving problems every single day. It's another fire to put out every day and you got to have the guts. You got to have the ability to say, oh, this didn't work. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to keep going. And that don't really come from the silver spoon. That comes from having that, those guts inside of you and that ability to keep moving it no matter what. And that comes from coming from backgrounds like ours. So my background, of course, yes, uh, I was a crack baby, uh, which is always interesting. I have a, a book titled, How About That for a Crack Baby? It's a bestseller. And the interesting thing about that, man, I have uh, seven brothers in which three are unfortunately deceased and three have been to prison. Uh, God bless all my bros. And my mom, you know, she was a professional shoplifter. I love her. That's like, she started me with entrepreneurship, you know, I, I got my own custom suit company because my mom, well, she started with the shoplifting realm. And for me, I said, hey, well, you know, it's all about selling clothes. I can just flip the product the way I can do it and make this legal. And even my brothers, even, you know, my, my dad was absent. But even with my brothers, I started selling drugs when I was 11 years old. But that also started the entrepreneurial journey, right? So it's an interesting background from Detroit. The high school I went to had about a 40% graduation rate. I didn't know anybody in college at all, man. And it was just, by the time I was 15, I, I was at a point where I was uh, adopting my younger brother who was five years younger than me. And I got a mentor in my life. I listened to her because she was beautiful. One thing led to another. I messed around with the college, multiple degrees later, all type of accolades and awards. Now I got to have, now I get an opportunity to have conversations with brothers as such as great as yourself, man. So it's been a journey, but I'm here, man. Hey, bro, and I'm very happy that you're here, and I'm very happy that you uh, made it a point to serve other people because you kind of could have been selfish, Sean, and was like, nah, I'm just going to help myself, but you made a decision that you wanted to help a lot of people. So listen, we really want to make today, I want you guys to uh, get out your pen, get out your pad, because I really want to help people become an author after the day, right? I want y'all to at least get some of the game and some of the strategies, 
to help you become that because why shouldn't you write your story? Why shouldn't you have a book that's gonna get you paid? And here's my thing, Sean, the thing that I love about a book, right? A lot of times I've been telling people, hey, we gotta, we gotta learn and unlearn, right? Society has told us, hey, go get a good job, follow that same path your entire life. But society has never told us, hey, create a book. Hey, you need to start a business. Hey, you need to monetize uh, your influence. Hey, you need to be able to generate income that you don't necessarily have to work for. And the reason why I love a book because I believe it's unlike many other products because it is literally something you could create once and get paid forever, over and over and over again. A lot of people say, I say, hey, what's your favorite book? A lot of people like Think and Grow Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And the families of the people who created these books, Robert Kiyosaki is still here. Think and Grow Rich, long gone. But these people are generating millions annually off of a story that they created one time. J.K. Rowling, she created Harry Potter. That made her a billionaire. It's going to make her kids, her kids, 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 kids will never want for anything off of her creating something one time. So yeah. my idea is this, Sean, I know we're on a mission personally this year to help a thousand people become authors, but I really just want you guys to know this is your year. I want you to say that this is my year to make my book come out, right? This is my year that I'm going to literally put out my story to the world. Even if you writing a false story, like this is going to be the year I do that because this is a product. I get to sell my book over and over and over and over again, but I only did the work once. So the real name of the game, guys, is working smarter and not necessarily harder. So, Sean, let's jump into a little bit about the book process. And you know what? I, I want to make sure people understand this too, man, because you'll get people that talk about uh, making money from books and look at it from a one-dimensional perspective by just thinking that, oh, people are going to read my book, so I'll make money from that. You got to understand, a book is your intellectual property uh, a book, right? It's your intellectual property, and it's a business card. Right. So you got to understand that the products and services that you offer are in the front and the back of that book. When, what other time will you actually get the opportunity to hold somebody's attention for hours? Right. And then be able to let them know all the things that you offer to bring them into your world and for them to say, OK, I'm silent. I'm just listening to your every word. That's what a book does. And you got to also think about having a book also allows you to have PR. Uh, around whatever you want to talk about at this particular time. Do you want to reinvent yourself? Do you want to go deeper into what you're providing? You get that book and you can actually do that. That book will enable you to enlarge your platform. A lot of people think that, oh, you got to have a platform in order to have a book. No, you can have a book and that can enlarge your platform. Mm. Okay? Say that part. Say that last part again because I, I don't want nobody to miss that on this podcast, brother. Say that one more time. I'll tell you right now, a lot of people think that they need a platform to launch a book but a book can launch a platform, right? Ooh. Let's be very clear about that. So when you actually are able, really thinking about considering doing a book, if you have a story, a message, or expertise, or a combination of those three, you need to get it out here. It's your intellectual property business card, and you don't want to be caught in the world without one if you have something to say. Wow. So with that said right there, um, when we're talking about doing a book, a lot of times there are three big areas that people think about when they're having a book, there are three big things. People will think about concepts of how do I become a bestseller? Uh, how do I make six figures? Or they may ask themselves like, man, how do I even get it done? Because before I could be a bestseller or even make six figures, I got to produce the book in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of knowing that, can you get this book done efficient and effectively in a nice time period? Uh, and then once you have it done, understanding this, writing it is 5%, selling it is 95%. Mm. right also understanding this a million people publish a book a year over half of them are self-published authors the average self-published author is only seven two hundred and fifty books but why because what they're doing is they're so focused on writing that they haven't focused on selling it. Mm. so really understanding the concept of selling the book and making sure that people can get their eyes on your book not just because you're trying to exchange it just to get a dollar but you want to really add real value to somebody's life. You got to put your, you're going to put your, your blood, sweat, and tears into a book. But sometimes what people need, such as myself, or I think everybody, everybody needs a mentor. And in order for me to have a book where I was able to, you know, make over 20,000 on my first launch and uh, multiple six figures since my first book has come out 
And the, the reason I've been able to do that is because I tap into mentors. Everybody needs a mentor. You don't want to go into no mission alone. It's kind of like this, basically. If you want to be a pro at anything, you're not going to catch LeBron, Kobe, Michael Jordan. Every last one of them got something in common, and it's called a coach, a.k.a. I'll call it a mentor, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to do anything on a pro level, you got to have a mentor. So when it comes down to having a book, make sure you have your book mentor. If it comes down to whatever you're doing from an entrepreneurial standpoint, make sure you have your mentor so you can move forward. So with that said, we have some principles and some ideas and concepts to make sure that you have a mentor even right here as it relates to the Not Your Self-Published book. Yeah. So uh, with that said, I will say this one. When it comes down to making sure that you can actually put a book together, one thing you want to do is be very authentic, okay? A lot of times people may put out a book of what they think people want to hear, but it's not about what people, what you think people want to hear as much as it about what's tr true about you that people want to hear, right? You got to put that first part out there because if you're doing something and it's not authentic and real, then it can't really help anybody and it's going to be very short-lived. But if you want something like a Think and Grow Rich or anything like that, you can get it done. And a way to be authentic, especially if you want a topic that you're not even an expert over, interview other people that are experts over. Put out a book about it. That's exactly what Napoleon Hill did in Think and Grow Rich. And furthermore, beyond that, if you want to be an expert in any particular area, I like to make sure people can tap into the five-way expert rule. You got to catch this one. The five-way expert rule. And when you put this into your book and prove to people that you're an expert over a subject matter, this is when people will take you super duper serious. Five-way expert rule is just like this. It's something that's five, things, five ways that you can be considered an expert. Number one, if you get some type of degree, certificate, or anything like that. It doesn't matter if it's a a six week certificate or anything, any type of license or anything that says that this person is an expert, boom, you're an expert. Number two, Malcolm Gladwell says put 10,000 hours in. Well, you could put in 10,000 hours, 10,000 hours, but really it's just a matter of time. You can say for the last three years I've done this, last four years, five years, whatever it is, time can make you an expert. Number three, um, Tal Lopez, uh, he, he says that, uh, he was like, he was telling one of his mentors, you know, I'm going to go to school so I can make sure people understand that I'm an expert. He says, well, you don't really need to go to school to make sure people think you're an expert. Just make a million dollars. So basically, not a million, but finances will make people understand that you're an expert. So let's say that you say, I've made six figures from doing this. Well, now people are paying attention. Even if it's not a million, if you made six figures from it, multiple six figures from it, you got people's attention. Even if you say, I made... 75,000 from doing this in the, the first week of whatever. Anything that's substantial, people are paying attention. Number three. Number four is simply this one of my favorites. If you have another expert call you an expert, you're an expert. Boom. Just that silly. Just that silly. Just that simple, right? And the last one is by the testimony. Who else out there can vouch for the fact that you've done what you say you're going to do? So when you have one of those five things right there, number one, uh, you have some type of certificate or something like that. Number two, um, you can say that it's a matter of time. Number three, it's a matter of money. Number four, an expert calls you an expert. Number five, the testimony. Once you do those right there or any combination of any one of those, put that, take that, put it inside a book and speak on that topic. Get some interviews to mothers so that you can fill up more pages and even though it's like this, if you want to get this book done fast in a hurry, I'll tell you this one. This is a great one here. You want to make sure that you understand how long the book needs to be. Sometimes people think they need to write for dear life. You don't need to write for dear life, right? You need to write for substance and context. And so now, if you think about it, uh, my first best-selling book is 330 pages. It's a lot of pages. One of my favorite books is Crush It from Gary Vee. That book is 130 pages. It's 20 pa 200 pages less. They're both $20. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how long the book is. Just get your content in that book. Make sure, because 5% of it is writing it, so you can get to the 95% of selling it. Now, something that I'll say is simply this, too. When you're selling a book, one of the most important things that you can do is think about when do you need to think about selling a book? On launch day 
Bro, if you think about selling a book on launch day, you're not about to be selling too many of them. Let me be honest with you, right? So the thing is, it's all about adding impact to people's life, but you got to think about how you're going to get it to them in the writing process. I'm talking about, you got to think about it before the writing process, during the writing process, the pre-launch, the launch, and the post-launch life after you actually launch it as well. You got to make sure you're thinking about how you're going to sell that book throughout all those different principles. Now, that's how you, those are some things to think about, about getting a book done. Now, when you also want to think about making sure that you can actually even get this book to even be a bestseller, you got to think about your campaigns, but you got to think about the secret sauce that's really dope. If you can jump into understanding the keys and the beauty of having a pre-order. The pre-order is your navigation tool for becoming a bestseller. Amazon, New York Times, whatever it is. The pre-order is where you really want to make sure you're placing your energy to get it done. Now, it's a number of strategies that you can use to become a bestseller. And it's a number of different ways that you can become a bestseller. You got New York Times. You got Amazon. You got uh, Business Weekly. You got this one, that one. And all of them are good credentials for you to actually say and truthfully say that you are a bestseller. Just get one of them, if not get all of them. But just make sure you get on one of those lists and know that the secret sauce for any of them is in the pre-order of making it happen. Right. Yikes, bro. I don't want to stop you, but geez. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, listen. We, hey, we, we done with this podcast. You just gave them, you just gave he Guys, and listen to me. I, I want to put some context in that. He just gave you a whole lot of game right now. It's funny, as I was thinking about a title just popped in my mind for our episode is going to be how to become a bestseller because you're literally just giving the game for people to really be able to get started and at least get their book out of there. So guys, what I want you guys to do as you're listening, first, I hope you're taking notes. Second, I hope you're really putting in your mind, like I'm going to make it my mission this year to become a bestselling author, right? Cause I think that's key. Um, couple things, Sean, We'll get you out of here in a few minutes, but for you, you've been writing multiple books, helping a lot of people uh, write books. What's one of the things that has helped a lot of people get it done? I, I know you got a program, which we'll talk about, but is there any, how do, how do you stay focused? How are you telling people to stay focused in the process? Because I know a lot of people start, but they don't finish. They get unfocused. Is there, what's the key, one, for you actually staying focused on your goals, because you run multiple different companies and different things and then what's a goal i mean how do you help your clients stay focused when it comes to putting out books as well as yourself since you put out several books so and that's a good question and one thing i'll say is you always got to start um and be real clear about your plan so people will say have a plan but one of the biggest things is having a plan that you're extremely clear about because if you're not extremely clear about it it's hard for you to go from having work ethic, to being clear, to creating that plan, to being consistent, to gaining momentum, to actually finish the book. Now, one thing that I do is I always add accountability in, and that means that I have accountability partners with the, write, with the book writing process. So in the program, of course, we have a Facebook community where there's multiple people writing books. Of course, there's monthly masterminds where people are writing books. When you get connected with people that are also uh, doing the same thing that you're doing, you tend to actually make sure that you're on top of getting it done. I don't care whatever project you're doing, accountability is key. Um, so th that's something where you got to just make sure that you jump into a land of your friend tours and make sure that you begin to have your timeline that you're extremely clear about. And then that way you can get it done. The issue with I see people have, they, they don't know when um, – well, they're, well, see, the thing is, they think they have a plan. They could be a plan in front of them, but did you understand the clear next steps along the path? If you don't have that, then you're, you're going to be stuck. You're going to talk about writer's block. Writer's block is cold for I just simply wasn't prepared. Ooh, so you said it's cold for I simply just wasn't prepared. Wow. Yes. Jeez. Get prepared. And, guys, I really like that. And, and just to say it, you said a major key, get clear. I don't think that's just with a book. You need to get clear, period. Like, what do, what, what is it that you want out of this life? What is it that you want out of this book? And get clear on that. And once you're clear, I believe you can make better decisions to help you get closer to the desired outcome that you're looking to reach. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. so I'm happy you kind of said that. 
said that get clear, man, I think that's is crucial, man. Also, you know the other reason, Sean, I like the book process, bro, and I think it's important. You create, I, I look at creating products, right, Sean, is look, I'm creating a product, just say a book or me, I'm the brand. And there's several other ways you can make money from that book. You got an audio book now, right? You have a audio book. Now you have a book course, like where, where it could be one teaching other people how to do it, that's a process in it, or it could simply be um, just a course showing you the exact steps you need to take to release in your book. Now you're getting booked for speaking engagements, right? Now you're getting booked for workshops. So having a book is literally having a business. Like you said, this can be that thing to help people really launch their platform opposed to waiting to write the book once they have a platform. So you right. saying that topic is like, that's important, bro. Right, and I would even say this, because one thing, I, I feel like everybody, whenever you're teaching something, I feel like you should have some level of expertise in it, right? So I think that when you have a book, if you create a course, create a course about what you're talking about in the book, right? So it kind of goes in line with having um, your book is simply your intellectual property business card. So what that means is, these are drawing your clients to you. So if anybody is spending time with you and they're actually reading your words, if they continue reading those words long enough, they should fall in love with you and everything you offer, right? So once they fall in love with you and everything that you offer, you have to make sure that if you have an academy, you have to make sure if you have an additional product, if you have like a t-shirt company or brand or anything, whatever you have, you have a mission. So it's not even just selling products and services, but also the mission that you're on, if you wanna help more people by doing a, B, and C. You want to be able to make sure you can activate the fact that you're doing A, B, and C so that other people can join you in that mission. And not only that, I will say this. The book, this whole platform with the book, like you said, you can sell the book. You can sell a course. You can sell a curriculum. You could do a workbook. You could be speaking. Listen, man, it goes on and on and on and on, but that foundation starts with the book because since the book declares that it's your it's your honorary PhD. It's already giving you the right to speak about this topic and expand your platform. That's major. And uh, I know you talk about mentors and uh, as well as I, I find a lot of mentors in books. So a lot of my mentors, they're not, I don't physically have access to them, but I'm reading their books. I'm learning from them. So one, share with me a few of your favorite books that kind of made an impact on your life. And maybe who are some of the people you're currently learning from or mentors that you're seeking out advice from because we're constantly in a stage of constantly adding new mentors for us to learn. We, have, we One thing that Sean and I do, we have increased our teachability index because we understand like in order for us to get to the next level, we have to learn from people who are next level. In order for us to increase our income, we have to learn cutting edge strategies. We got to actually take action on the information that our various mentors are teaching us. So sure what it's just, couple of your recommended books and uh, maybe some people you're currently learning from, maybe some other people might want to check them out as well. Absolutely, man. So, and this is, see, and this is why, this is why I love it so much, bro, because it's when you, when you, you are a product, you're a product of information that people need to get to the next level. Me too, right? And so being able to share like, look, just some of the resources that you can use to get to that next level, it's everything. We, it's everything, right? So a few books that, that I love, uh, even just this last year that even took me to the next level of my mind uh, and even some I'm reading currently. Uh, one is my man, Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone, uh, the 10X rule will take your mindset to a whole nother level because when you actually see the 10X rule, he gives this information and advice. But the, the most amazing thing is the last chapter, you actually see how he activated in his life. And then if you look at him today, you're like, wow, he's light years ahead of where he was then. He didn't have $100 million at that point. That was a goal. The man worth uh, like $750 million now. Wow, he's really 10x this thing, right? Not only that, uh, I would say that another book that I think is really great for people to read, um, if you can really, this is a, a short one, just so you can get done with the book. I, I think that people need to get uh, the completion of books in their mind just so they can keep going with this process. Who Moved My Cheese, right? Who Moved My Cheese by Mr. Blanchard. Now, the thing is, when you read Who Moved My Cheese, this will keep you in mind of what's going on today. Innovation is always happening. Bro, the way that we even market on social media and advertise, is different from two months ago in 2018 than it is right now. It's a totally different game. 
So you always got to stay ahead of what's going on to make sure that, that you are, are prepared and that you're not just stuck in one way, but you're okay with a shift. You can pivot and still make it happen regardless. Just just like Periscope goes down, Instagram is uh, Snapchat is on. Snapchat is doing whatever. Look, we on Instagram Live because Instagram is killing everybody. Dope. Who moved my cheese? That's a great one. And what I'm reading right now is by Sam Walton. Sam Walton, um, his particular book, uh, Jeff Bezos recommends this to anybody who works with him at corporate. And his book. And he don't recommend it. They got to read it. Mandatory read. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mandatory. You know what I'm saying? Like Sam Walton, he created Walmart, right? They got to read this book. And so I'm actually diving into that one right now. That's good, Sean. I read it several years ago, bro. And you, that dude was a legend. He was doing this before they had social media. I mean, they didn't have how we, the ease of us getting our message out to an audience is instantaneous. Yeah. He had to build brick and mortar businesses. He had to go charter his uh, helicopter or his uh, plane and go fly over and see potential places. It's just the mindset that he had was light years. Light years <laughs> ahead, bro. But I'll tell you what, it's the same savage. Yeah, yeah. It's the same savage. Like, it, and, and that's what gets me. That's what, that's what inspires me. And that's why I love us being French boys, right? My man Neo inspires me because I see how hard you go, right? And it inspires me to say, oh, you know, I don't, I don't like the word competition. I, I like to, to call it collaboration, right? Because I'm just like, it's collaborating with my bro. My bro doing this good energy. I'm doing this good energy. This is collaboration to make all of us better by going harder. And when I see cats like Sam Walton, uh, Grant Cardone, I can see like any, anybody in the game that's going hard, that is motivation to pound the ground. Because you know you have value, period. You have value. You got a story, period. You got an expertise, period. You got to get that out there and make it happen. And just to add, Sean, I think that collaboration is so important. And I want to give you guys a tip. I want you guys to actually go take action on this. And that's the thing that's going to be different from our podcast is I don't just want to talk, 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 talk. I want you to hear, the, hear these hacks. I want you to say, hey, hey, Neo, I use them. Hey, Sean, thank you so much for the advice. And, and I just, I can assure you, you're going to go so far in life if you're willing to take action. So I'll give you a quick one. When I was growing up, or when I had my first business, the second business, I had one, I had a fruit truck, two, I had a cleaning company. Most people's mind is, hey, I see people in the dump dumping off their trash, right, Sean? They're like, you're my competitor. Oh, they're taking all the work from me. Hey, I'm going to go talk to them. Hey, my name's Nehemiah. I just got started in this business. Um, I wanted to give you my number. If you ever had any extra work or if you ever need any help on a job, let me know, right? And most people, like, they grunt in their face at the competitor. I'm like, no, I'm connecting with them because here's the thing about most people. You can't do all of the work. They said, Sean, right now, 600, 600 million is being spent every single month on digital products. Sean will never sell 600 million by himself. And I'm not saying... I'm not being negative, but I'm being realistic. You got hundreds and thousands of people who is getting a piece of that 600 million. One person will not capture the full market simply because people like to learn from different people, certain people. Uh, Sean's guy is Grant Cardone. Mine may be uh, Russell Brunson. Everyone has a lead person who they like to get information from. So one, if we're all being competitive, all of these big people, they work together. Russell Brunson works with Grant Cardone, right? Grant Cardone works with E.T. E.T. may work with Andy Frisella. Andy Frisella may work with Cole Hatter. All of these legends who people look at as legends, they all work together because they know one person isn't going to corner the market share. So when I had my business, I would go to these, everyone. Hey, my name is Nehemiah. This is what I do. Uh, if I can never help you, blah, 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 let me know. And that's what I would do. And guess what? Most of my business started coming from my competitors. Why? Because they couldn't handle all the work and some jobs were beneath them. So they gave those jobs to me. And then when I got to a certain level, I couldn't handle the jobs. I gave it to someone else. But what if I made them my competitors, Sean? We wouldn't be getting a business. That's right. Make them collaborators, man. Collaboration over competition all day long. And just to add, Sean, on the same block as my, the foundation, our event space center, there's someone five doors down. I just messaged her earlier. Hey, you got a, you got a space Sunday? 
But what if I say, yo, you're going to be my competition? We right. pass jobs to one another. Right. So, guys, I need you to change the paradigm shift the way you look at competition. Yes, there is competition, but I prefer collaboration uh, yeah. because I believe we could go a lot further together. Absolutely. So, I to add that. Absolutely. So, Sean, I ain't going to hold you up. I know I'm incredibly busy. Uh, your day is any last words you want to share with people, then I'm going uh, I'm going to ask you to talk about the program and maybe we'll drop like a link in the show notes. I know you and I also did a program together. We'll drop it in the notes so people can be able to get their book out this year since I know that's a goal of several people. But any last words of advice you want to share with people? Because we want people to max out 2019. We want people to make their goals a reality. We want people to live the best life. We want people to fire their boss if that's the option they want. We want people to level up. We want people to take a chance on them, betting on them. So any last thing you want to share with people uh, along that message? Absolutely, man. I want everybody to know that you lack absolutely nothing. I want you to know that work ethic is what you need to make it to the next level. And everybody in this world has work ethic. It's just about what direction they're channeling, channeling that work ethic. It's a kid somewhere that knows everything about Fortnite right now. There's no shortage of work ethic when it comes to Fortnite, but how can we channel that same energy towards something that's going to be productive to make, make impact and income to actually eventually get you legacy, right? So make sure we focus on legacy. Make sure you understand that there's no shortage of work ethic in you. Channel it in the direction it needs to go. Get your impact and income. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, please, everybody, follow Sean on Instagram at Sean T. Blanchard. Probably the exact same thing on Facebook. And talk a little bit about the program as we wrap up on Accelerate the Great today, Sean. But I know the program is literally helping people accelerate the great and get their message heard. So talk a little bit about it, and we'll plug it down there in the notes as well. Absolutely. Man, you know, and I'm so excited to talk about it because there's dozens of people that come into it you know, you come into the program, like I said, 5% of it is writing. Uh, so we really do focus on that writing process to make sure that you can get that done within 90 days, give you the structure for it to really knock that part out. And quite frankly, you'll be done with the actual writing. I have people in the program that have finished their books within 10 days, three and a half weeks. And it's crazy. I'm talking about 400 page books, but it's a process and a system for it to get that done. And so we help you with that part. And then not only that, but we also make sure that that 95% of that big portion of understanding how to sell the book, again, the PR marketing, the understanding like how these press releases work, one page of work, getting yourself out there and not just focusing on being an author, but also focusing on being a speaker. Because one of the key ingredients of actually making sure that your words and your impact is out there is making sure that you can get in front of people and speak about it and understand how do you capture these audiences. I just came from San Diego just this last week. Couldn't meet my man Neo at a conference that I really wanted to go to because I had to speak for thousands of dollars at some business conference. Can you believe that? Well, the thing is, the truth of the matter is, uh, I was, it was great for me to actually be able to do that, but I would have loved to get that value at the same time. But we teach you how to get in front of people, how to make sure you can get on these stages, how that you can get an agent, how you can make yourself an agent, how to build a team and have people that can actually pitch you to all of that, how to build your audience organically. Some people say, I don't have any followers. I have people in the program where we teach them how to grow your audience organically. And people are in the program gaining a thousand people a day that is actually enjoying the content and the information that they're providing for them too. So the thing is, we wanna make sure that we can help you with these, making sure that you can sell that book, make sure you can get it written first and make sure you can sell it too. And I'll tell you this, within six weeks of being in the program, people are actually making their initial investment back because they're actually going on pre-order and understanding the whole process. And they're like, look, Sean, I'm six weeks in and I haven't even launched the book fully, but I already made money back. Thank you so much. Let's make it happen. Impact, income, make it happen. Don't play your legacy. Make sure you come aboard and get an author sequence and let's get it done. Let's get it, man. Super proud of you, man. Thanks so much for just what you're doing. Um, thank you so much for helping people get their message, their story out. I believe there's so many stories not being told because they don't have a the direction, they're afraid, or whatever the reason is, but I'm happy that you created a program to kind of walk people through the process so they don't have to worry about that. So thank you, brother. And uh, guys, this is another amazing episode of Accelerate the Great. I promise you guys, I told you everyone who I bring before you, they're fire, they're six-figure earners, they're seven-figure earners, they're eight-figure earners, they're nine-figure earners. And the ultimate reason why I want to help you, because in school, they didn't help me. If I wanted to be an author, 
No one could teach me, so I'm going to bring you an author here who can show you. You want to earn seven figures in this industry? I'm going to bring that person. So as you're going to continue to see, we're going to keep improving. We're going to keep bringing amazing people on our show like Sean to give you advice to literally help you accelerate the great. And the best thing about all of this is, which most people enjoy, is free. So all I'm going to ask you guys to do one time, follow my brother, Sean T. Blanchard on Instagram. Say, hey, I really enjoyed your episode on Accelerate the Great. Um, uh, join his program. That's going to be another fact and key that's going to help you out. And in addition to that, guys, please like, please subscribe, please review, and please share this podcast. I want to help get this thing out around the entire world. Last time I checked, we were like 100 on the charts, on top podcasts in the business section. We need to get that down to top 20, guys. So I need your help in helping us do that. Please like, subscribe, and review. But with it, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and continue to accelerate to great. And I'll see you on the next episode. Have a good night. See you.